So next time you are outside, I want you to take a look around and sort of notice the mature garden around you and the drama that comes with that landscape. You'll soon be aware of darker trees, darker shrubs. It adds interest. It also adds contrast. So in other words, what we're saying is green is great, but purple, black, and deep red colors really make a big difference. Horticulturist Sheridan Hansen is making her case that dark foliage is very desirable. It's great to see you, great to have you. Thank you, it's so much fun to be here this morning. So you don't need an episode of The Bachelor to bring drama into your life. Oh no, we've got enough <laughs> of it in the garden for everyone, enough to spread around. So yeah, no TV needed, but um, yeah, we can add some drama and interest to our gardens and really make our gardens stand out easily by using some of these dark colors. So sell us, because for the woman out there who loves like a colorful palette, like a poppy pink, yellow, orange, red, vibrancy mm -hmm. of all things flower and color, what are the benefits of bringing in these more moody tones? Well, besides the drama, we can add depth. So it makes mm. those colors stand out and it gives you this feeling, especially if you have a small garden, it makes it feel a lot bigger because you're creating these spaces that feel like they're standing behind, you know, farther gotcha. back. Yeah. Um, it also adds interest adds some creativity, gives you a focal point, and adds a bunch of variety to your landscape as well. So a great thing to do. And not just for the fall. I mean, here we are in fall, and right. we'll lean into these colors because they kind of speak to the upcoming season. But I like your point that they're the backdrop. They are. Or they can be the backdrop. They can be the backdrop. And I've kind of used some plants here to showcase that. Yeah. So I've got these bright green colors. And then you can see how that makes those dark colors mm -hmm. really pop. So that's what we use it for. Point us to some plants. In fact, we'll start with trees if we can that, that add what you talked about, the contrast right. and the drama and they work well in our Utah climate. Absolutely, so one of those plants is the Japanese maple. Now in Utah, it kind of has to be a little sheltered, a little protected, mm -hmm. um, and baby just a bit, but it, they work beautifully. And they can add some height and some of that structure behind the garden as well. So not only do you get that beautiful dark color foliage, in the winter you'll get structural interest behind as well. So. That's another angle to consider, the yeah. structure of the garden, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, yeah. You want to think about it in all seasons. All seasons, all senses. Let's talk about shrubs. What are some dark, moody shrubs we can Reach Dark for. moody shrubs. So one that people are really intrigued by right now is smoke bush. And smoke mm. bush is really dark. It's beautiful. It puts on these plumes that look like smoke when it's mature. So this is a pretty young one. But you can see that beautiful round foliage and how dark it is. It's gorgeous. Another option for you, if you don't want something quite as big and bold as the smoke bush, is something like the barberry. So okay. you can see it's not quite as dark, but it does have that dark color that kind of comes in on the leaves, especially when we hit a little bit of sunshine on that one. And that one can tolerate part shade, so that's a great thing. So it's the sun that deepens the that deepens pigment? the color. Okay. Yeah. It's and kind of an ombre effect. It is, and it's really beautiful. So you can get those um, even darker than that, but I like the contrast in the ombre on that one. All right, you like nine bark as nine well? bark yes nine bark is over here so um, you can nine bark comes in all different kinds of um, height so we can vary our height in the garden this one they're all named for like devil names so this one is little devil oh lovely so it tells you it's kind of short and kind of naughty it's kind of got this dark <laughs> color going on with it but they're so much fun beautiful um gorgeous bloom in the spring like a light pink bloom on this that just kind of drapes oh. down it's beautiful one so of my you favorites can, you can holler out you little devil you in the little garden. devil and you cannot be pointing at your kids. You can be pointing right, at exactly. your Your right? neighbors won't know what's up, but you'll know, you'll know. Elderberry, yeah. also a good choice. Elderberry is an excellent choice. Um, that one, you can get a lace leaf type that is absolutely beautiful. Again, it's a larger shrub, kind of like the smoke bush. So if you have a big area to fill in a backdrop, that would be gorgeous. Do we have elderberry here? I do not have elderberry here today, but um, beautiful umbrella type um, blooms that are kind of a light pink color. Gorgeous. Okay, let's move to the perennial category. You yes. like coral bells for the mood, for the drama. Yeah, and look at this. This is absolutely gorgeous. This dark foliage with this bright, bright Pretty. pink that just See? kind of pops out of yes. the top of that. So that's what we're talking about when we talk about that moodiness and that interest. Just beautiful. And that can withstand sun to part shade. So you can really move that around the garden and have fun with that. Okay, what else? Other perennials we um, love. We've got Gara here. So this one, um, you can see it's kind of got some red on the leaves. And the more sun it gets, the darker those leaves will get. So this is another one that kind of gives you that same ombre effect. But then it's got the really bright um, bloom on it that kind of stands out against that darker color foliage. It's kind of a case example of exactly what you're talking about, it is, right? With those absolutely. lighter colors. Yeah, it's just beautiful. And then we've got penstemons. So penstemons will come in these deeper colored foliage with, um, you know, some of these brighter, lighter um, blooms up on the top. So that you've got husker red, dark 
towers a bunch of different varieties that you can choose from if you're into penstemons. It's which, textural too. It it's is. It's got some cool texture Absolutely. to it. Absolutely. Another great one is sedum. Mm. Um, these sedums bloom in the fall. So if you're looking for something to add fall interest to your garden, the sedums are excellent for that. So, and they'll get larger um, with big, bright, um, kind of light colored pink blooms on the top. All right, let's move to grasses, Sheridan. What yeah. do you recommend? So there's a fountain grass that people typically use quite a bit. I don't have that one here today, but I do have this black Mondo grass. And this one I absolutely love. This is so moody. If you have a shady spot in your yard that gets a little bit more water, this is an excellent um, option. And you can see it against the hosta. Yes. It just pops. It's absolutely gorgeous. One of my favorite plants to use in some of those places in the garden. Okay. And then I've also brought some things that maybe are not, um, you know, perennial. So cordyline is something that you could put in a container to get that grassy look. You could also do um, pansies that are dark and black or mm -hmm. petunias, depending on the time of year. I had a tough time finding those this time of year, but yeah. they're out there, so look for them, source them, and you can have that pop of drama in your pots too, not just in the landscape. Well, and I see a lot of people playing with these deeper, darker grasses in the fall with these refreshed fall plants pre-Halloween, yes. right? Pre-season, right. it's kind of a fun thing to do. Annuals, any annual options? Yeah, so those petunias, those um, pansies, both sure. of those will work. Um, there are, you know, a host of different colors and textures that you can find to kind of make okay. those stand out. Okay. How do you work the magic with placing them? And I'm kind of fixated on what you said about structural interest too. You're really looking at how they play and, and, and dance with all of the other plants. Yeah, absolutely. So put them behind to make something lighter pop or, um, you know, use them as a focal point. So you're going to put it right up front um, with lighter colors behind it. So okay. you can kind of switch it back and forth and really make it stand out um, and make it be something that draws your eye in the garden. And look at that texture too, you yeah, say. Yeah, absolutely. Text use that texture. So don't just look at color, also look at texture. So use the grasses with the broader color or the broader shaped leaves and kind of bounce back and forth and play off of each other that way as well. All right. Thank you so much. Pointing Thank us to you. different details in our garden to analyze and examine as we kind of plant and plan ahead. We appreciate it and also appreciate you are offering one of the first fall events for families we of the are. season. It's already time. Can you believe it? So yeah, we have the Scarecrow Walk coming up at the USU Botanical Center. It's September 8th through 18th. So 10 days. It's a free family event. We are looking for scarecrow builders right now. So okay. we need more people to build scarecrows for us. Um, we should have about 50 scarecrows on site. It's free. It's a great way to advertise a business or do something as a family project. So these are volunteers. They put together the scarecrow, a business. Mm -hmm. Great idea. Yeah, it's a great way to advertise. We get a ton of people there, between four and 5,000 people there for the event, and it is so much fun. So scarecrowwalk.usu.edu okay. will get you to the website so you can apply and get your scarecrows going and get them being built. There's a lot of creative minds out there. there so are. I'm excited to come see September 8th is when it begins. September 8th. Yep. Well, I look forward to it. And if you're interested in helping, volunteering, and supplementing, what did you call them? A scarecrow builder? Yep. You want to be a scarecrow builder? Hit up the website. Thank awesome. you so much, Sheridan. Great Thank job. You.